This is Main Street on Prairie Public. I'm Doug Hamilton, joined now by Captain Annie Gerhardt. She's a nurse practitioner with the North Dakota Army National Guard, and she's been deployed to Accra, Ghana. Thanks for joining us today, Captain Gerhardt. Thank you. Glad to be here. Why are you in Accra, Ghana? I'm actually here on a medical mission, so not a true deployment, not here fully for as a deployment, but it's a medical mission uh, through U.S. AFRICOM, and they actually lead some medical readiness trainings. We're actually working in a team environment, so here working with the National Guard, as well as um, working with the U.S. Army in a seamless environment, and with national uh, medical professionals here in Ghana, so that we're collaborating in a partnership um, for us as medical readiness training in a, an austere environment where we don't have everything so readily available, as well as they get to learn from us um, from what medical expertise we can provide, as well as we're learning from them on what it takes to work when you don't always have lights working or you don't always have the equipment right readily at hand and some things might be a little bit more delayed and how do you handle that as a medical professional as well as how can you become very innovative in making things safe and effective so that you can treat at the best and utmost care when we are such as deployed to some place such as Afghanistan or Iraq where we may not have everything readily available because we want to give the best care available. Well, Accra is on the coast of Ghana. Ghana is in West Africa. How would you describe the country as far as you've seen it to our listeners? It is beautiful. There's lots of vibrant colors. The people are very vibrant and very friendly and happy. Uh, but you will go down one single street and see the utmost poverty, um, run-down you know, trash, and the very next spot is a beautiful mansion. And that's how it goes throughout the entire city. I'm, I know there are sections that are all just maybe one area, but for the most part, that's what we see is lots of poverty, um, a lot of people coming out into the streets um, to sell their goods, more of an informal economy. Um, but very friendly and very stoic. They do not complain. They do not cry because, you know, if you, pain medicine costs money. So some of the most atrocious injuries I've seen, and they are still very appreciative and work through that discomfort. And just they're comforted just knowing that we're there to help them, that they're actually getting some care. And that makes a big difference. We got a little background information on you, and it said that you joined the Army later in life. What prompted you to join the Guard? I've always looked at the Guard. My husband has been a National Guard member since he was 17, um, so obviously he's one of my heroes. Uh, and we've looked at it at different times uh, when I went back to school, uh, but then I was pregnant, and, you know, you're raising a family, and one of us, all, we always felt that one of us should need to be home with the children, and then uh, in 2013, I decided to go back to get my doctorate in nursing practice. And we looked at the military at that time, and they didn't have any positions for me in the state of North Dakota. Uh, but they still paid through my husband uh, three quarters of my tuition uh, to finish that uh, last year of my doctorate. And right after graduation, within a month, they had an, a, a slot that opened. And so um, I was able to, uh, in commission at that time, I wanted to commission before I turned 40. <laughs> I'm spending my 42nd birthday over here in Africa, so that's another uh, birthday treat. Um, but uh, it was just that value service, um, something more to add to my professional career. But also working in Devil's Lake, I get to see so many guardsmen and I always wanted to be able to help them more. There's a certain understanding that goes into their medical readiness and what do they need and how to keep them ready so that they can continue serving, whether it's a full-time position or on the side. And probably the best way to do that was to be commissioned myself and be on the inside to be able to help them. What about your experience do you think will be particularly interesting to your friends in Devil's Lake? Bringing back the experiences, um, sharing with fellow soldiers uh, the ability to be ready on a dime's notice and the experiences that I've had being able to share with the Ghanaians and um, again that they are wanting to learn from us and being in that mindset to lift us all up. 
I also teach on the side for students, uh, nurse practitioner students, and many of them go back to rural areas so I can share my experiences to them because they do need to be innovative throughout rural North Dakota to make things work for those patients in those areas, especially when you're transferring far distances. Being more mindful of of the waste that we probably have in the U.S. I mean, when I'm suturing, I'm suturing to the very last string because every suture that I ask for in addition is going to cost them more money. And so just being more mindful of what we do have and counting my blessings, as well as disaster preparedness is something I can, even within my local community, sharing some of the different things that we can do. For example, today, Um, We had run out of uh, splinting material, and we had open lower extremity fractures with bones that are through the skin, and how do you splint those? And we were using cardboard boxes and other apparatuses to secure those, as well as cervical collars when somebody comes in with a motor vehicle accident and we're concerned about a cervical spine injury. How can we stabilize that neck to prevent further damage? So just, again, being innovative and really counting our blessings, what we have in the U.S., Well, Captain Annie Gerhardt, thank you for your service. Thank you. Captain Annie Gerhardt is a nurse practitioner with the North Dakota Army National Guard.